today and to be part of the Beijing Global Center's programming. We are keenly aware of what great things are happening uh, here in China, even at a distance of many thousands of kilometers or miles. Uh, it is always exciting uh, to be here uh, in China. Uh, I started coming to China in the late 1970s, early 1980s, and to witness the transformation of China uh, is one of, the, one of the great experiences of life. I want to thank you for being here today uh, and for being friends of the university. Uh, this is a very, very impressive panel, uh, and it's talking, addressing one of the most important issues of the modern world, which is how to make every sphere of life open uh, to women. Our global centers are portals. They are Columbia University's link to the world, the cultures around the world, it connects our faculty and students to experiences uh, in every region of the planet. Bringing Columbia to the world is also important as bringing the world to Columbia. The Beijing Center here is one of our network of global centers. And it's a gathering place as well for our alumni and friends and parents and for the next class of Columbia students. We have dialogues and discussions about extremely important issues from climate change uh, to neuroscience. Today's conversation, as I said, is an extremely important one. The panelists here are witnesses to what is happening in business, technology, public health, and finance, and their experience proves that doors are being opened to women here as around the world but before were held tightly shut. Let me just say also that um, I'm very proud to uh, say that uh, a majority of the deans at Columbia uh, are now women. And our female faculty. Our female faculty and researchers are not only helping better understand society's attitudes towards and ideas about women in the workforce, but they are always, as it is their responsibility to do, challenging preconceptions of what women are capable of in work. It is fitting that today's discussion will be guided by Lan Yang, who not only has carved out an incredible role for herself as an entrepreneur and leader in today's digital sphere, she has also participated in the two-way exchange I described attending Columbia School of International and Public Affairs. She's been a loyal friend to Columbia, serving on the advisory board of the Global Center, on SIPA's advisory board, the School of International and Public Affairs, and on our Global Leadership Council. And she is now, most importantly, the proud parent of Kevin, who will graduate from Columbia College this spring. As the co-founder and chairwoman of Sun Media Group, she is the head of one of the largest private media companies in China. She became a household name long before that, thanks to her work as a broadcast journalist. And I was very proud and privileged to be one of her interviewees. <laughs> She's been a mentor and hero to many aspiring business people and entrepreneurs and journalists. What is perhaps most striking about this event, Opportunities for Women Leadership in the Digital Era, is that we also have and could have such events in New York City. But having them here and having them in New York is each different. It's together that makes them really, really successful. Before I pass the stage to Lan Yang and to the panel members, I want to quickly thank the Gen Fund and her Village Academy for making this event possible. Thank you for coming. Lan Yang, I turn it over to you. Thank you, President Bollinger. Uh, 
呃，我们的这个杰出的论坛的嘉宾啊，他们也可以用中文来呃，这个回答问题，或者是表达呃自己的一些观点和讲述自己的故事。Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's my great privilege、uh, to be here to moderate this panel this afternoon on women entrepreneurship. Uh, first of all, let us、um, put our hands together again for President Lee Bollinger, who is a great leader of Columbia University, and making an even greater university、uh, in the world.、Uh, and also, we have、uh, Saf Wan, who is the Executive、uh, Vice President in charge of all the global centers、uh, in nine countries now,、uh, which is a great adventure. And exposure of uh, Columbia uh, intellectual as well as social、uh, relevance to the globalization.、Um, well, the topic this afternoon is、uh, something very dear to my heart: women entrepreneurship and leadership. I just observed quietly about our four panelists. I find they are all in a very powerful posture of、uh, body language. <laughs> But truly, they are all very powerful girls. <laughs>、uh, let me introduce them one by one.、Uh, I have、uh, Han Xiaohong. Dr. Han Xiaohong、uh, is the founder of Ciming、uh, Health, Ciming Health Group, which is one of the leading、uh, health checkup groups、uh, in China. She's、um, a medical doctor herself on、um, um, um, oncology, right?、Uh -uh. Uh, oncology, yes,、um, and then、uh, she has built the,、uh, the a business from scratch, and now it's one of the leading companies、uh, in this country.、Um, let, let's put our hands together for Xiaohong、uh, first. Thank you, Xiaohong. And of course, we have、uh, Anna Fang,、uh, who is the partner and CEO of Zheng Fang, Zheng Ge Jijun. The 呃，合伙人和 CEO 啊 ，Anna 方方爱之女士。We also have、uh, Miss、uh, Chen Liu,、uh, who is the senior vice president of、um, ByteDance, which is better known as Toutiao in China. 呃，刘真女士。刘真的高呃，是我们今日头条的高级副总裁。And also, we are very、uh, happy to have、uh, Miss Wei Shu Shu Wei,、uh, who is the founder and the CEO of、uh, Zaozuo.com, which is one of the leading furniture and homeware design brand in China. Shu <laughs> Wei,、uh, well, to start our conversation and start、uh, by introducing yourselves and why you know this is the big why why you started. Uh, to join、uh, in the business world and started a company yourself,、uh, I would like to say uh, 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 some observations. Well, first of all, they say there are three Ws、uh, which are shaping this world and its future.、Uh, the first W is web, which is the internet, and the second is weather, which is the climate change, which connects the whole countries and people together, and the third W is women. Uh, the women's empowerment, their leadership, their participation in a more inclusive and sustainable、uh, world is vitally important for this planet. And、uh, another observation is that、uh, the UN、uh, 2030 Sustainable Goals、uh, lists a 50/50 planet as the eighth most important goal in the world.、Um, so that matters: women's participation and their rightful. Um, uh, representation in the global development matters uh, about uh, for the future of this planet,、uh, and also in China we observe there are、um, maybe a few、uh, social backgrounds which are quite distinguished、um, uh, or different from other countries and cultures. The first one is the、uh, women holding half of the sky policy, which is a, a national policy. To empower women and giving them equal rights in education and work, and second policy is actually controversially it's one-child policy. I, I read an、uh, article the other day saying that now suddenly the first generation of entrepreneurs in China found they only have their daughters to hand over their business, 
And so <laughs> uh, girls are inheriting big businesses uh, uh, in China, uh, let alone starting up their own. Um, and so uh, these social backgrounds uh, will also have impacts on individuals and uh, the business uh, opportunities as well as uh, uh, challenges uh, that our panelists have to face. So first of all, why don't we start by telling our stories like why you are doing what you're doing today. Uh, starting with Xiaohong. Xiaohong just said Chinese, right? Okay, I'm trying to help you. Sorry, I, uh, uh, I have to speak Chinese. But uh, well, I'm sorry, 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 i 呃，我做我刚才来的时候跟几个这几个妹妹一见面，我觉得他们的年龄，我刚刚开始创业，所以我说，我真的是觉得杨澜真的很相信我，把我扯到这个论坛上，没关系，还是个英语场子，没关系，他们也会接受长老。<笑>呃，所以说我呢，呃，我当医生和这个呃学习医学的路程，比我创业的时间还长啊。嗯呃，学医时间很长，我十一年的时间，当医生当了七年，十八年。那我创业创业了十五年。我肖红先，对对，稍微给我打空了。Okay. <笑>我肖红 has been a, 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 a medicine student and then doctor for eighteen years before she started her business.、Uh, that was like fifteen years now. 我其实最大的梦想是像是像上哥伦比亚这样的大学有机会去读书，但是我我只是在德国读了一个博士。那我没有机会在没有我这个年代的人那个时候没有找到机会去美国读书，但我的女儿现在是在哈佛，呃，在 Stanford 啊。嗯。She wish she could have such opportunities to study at Columbia. Uh, she got a doctorate in Germany. 呃，对，呃，那我其实现在跟哥伦比亚还真的是挺有缘分的。我开了一个诊所在曼哈顿啊，哥伦在五十七号街。我刚才查了一下，五十七街，对。哥伦比亚大学在一百一十五号，好像离我们大概很近的，几十分钟走过去，二十几分钟走过去的这样一个路程。呃、uh, ，She has a clinic in Manhattan on Fifty Seventh Street。呃，对我第一份创业呢，是我说刚才当医生比创业的周期还长。那我十十五年创办了慈明体检，嗯、呃，现在慈明体检在每年这个平台上我们合并借壳上市，啊、呃，已经我觉得已经画了一个阶段性的句号。那我现在已经还在创业的路上，所以我给我自己打的第二个身份，我觉得我还是创业者。呃，先孵化、推动、创办了几个不同的在健康领域的这个产业吧。两个成型的方向就是一个刚才说的辅助生殖，所以在曼哈顿我们已经开了医院，在国内也开了医院，那么也在对，就是呃生育啊，对，也代表这个是一个呃中国嘛，人口众多的。Mm. Now the the Ziming Health has been、uh, listed, so now she starts to be a, a serial uh, uh, entrepreneur by investing into um, um, some other companies.、Uh, one of which is the、um, how do you call that? The 辅助生生育的这个叫什么？啊 facilitating. facilitating birth or what? Yeah, birth facilitating company. Uh, facility, yeah, uh, facility clinic. Facility clinic. That that's the one in Manhattan. Uh, then the second business area, I think, uh, now it's moving to this, uh, this, this road. Is because I've done it for 15 years. I know the pain of the hospital industry. 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 啊，希望能为体检后的客户提供健康管理、医疗服务。啊，这样。And another company she has been investing in、uh, is a platform, health management platform, which helps people to manage their health after the checkups for all their lifetime. 对，这个这个平台基本上是技术加医疗服务，啊，这样的一个。Technology plus services. 现在的大数据、人工智能。
我想今天时间关系你为什么要创业这个我的问题你还没有问为什么要创业我觉得我一直觉得好多问题解决不了如果仅仅做医生的话你看到的问题是没有办法当时我是走牛科医生我做第一份工作做体检是为了觉得肿
uh, pour themselves into this new business and create, um, you know, large enterprises. So, yeah, that's wonderful work you have been doing. And actually, uh, I, I found this this data saying that uh, fifty five percent of internet startup companies are championed by women in China. Really? Yeah. So I found the data. Well, twenty percent. What? I found the data. Sorry, but you know, I think maybe, there are maybe a lot bigger of bigger companies or you know. Maybe my sure. data is venture backed because I do think if you look at like the Taobao store owners, many of them are women, yeah. and they're entrepreneurs. Um, they don't always look for venture-backed money, but um, they're definitely on many, many conventions. And we can get into the society reasons why I think it's easier to be an entrepreneur in China. But as so venture-backed companies, startups, uh, about 30% by women? Um, tw 20, I think it's about 20%. In mm -hmm. our portfolio, it's about 15, 20%. In the world, there are 125 million female entrepreneurs mm -hmm. um, in the world. I don't know, if, that's not a huge number to be honest. And, Actually, in venture capital, most of the top firms in China have a female partner. 20% mm -hmm. of venture capital firms have a partner who's woman compared in China, mm -hmm. compared to I think it's about 8% in um, the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, and let's and then the other financial, the banking leaders look at all the investment banks are mainly run by women in China. Mm -hmm. So I think women um, have uh, done really well in um, the sort of venture and financial industry in China. In the financial industries. Thank you so much, Anna. And Liu Zhen, you have been a, a trained lawyer. <laughs> uh, UC Berkeley was, was your educational background, right? And you have been a lawyer for nine years before you joined uh, uh, first uh, Uber China and then uh, this uh, bike bounce. Uh, so a lot of uh, kind of jumps across industries. Uh, what's your big why? Why you're doing what you're doing now? Um, I guess I I was a corporate lawyer for nine years, um, and I'm on the East Coast. I'm working at the law firm on the West Coast, sorry, on the West Coast. And so I actually I worked on a, a lot of VC financing, capital market deals. You know, kind of help and facilitate entrepreneurs. Um, so you know, one day I, I do wanted to you know even if I didn't really you know started something on my own, you know, become an entrepreneur. But I think a lot of people actually do have this called entrepreneurship. You know, we want we wanted to make a change, and we wanted to um, to just be more adventurous. So I joined Uber China to start it, basically started uh, China's operation. You know, from 50 people to a size of 500 people, and then it merged into DB. And then I started my second adventure, I find a dance, which um, you know, called, in China called Tokyo. I believe many of you are users. If not, please download the app right now. <laughs> <laughs> Always promoting our product. So Tokyo is the largest uh, content platform in China. We have what's a, its uh, market value now? The o the overall evaluation um, much bigger than what angel investors can handle. <laughs> but uh, let our oh, audience know what, what's the I mean, what's the evaluation now of your company. I mean, for private company, it's really hard. It's really you know the perception from investors, yeah. from sophisticated investors. Yeah, really but what was the what was the number from last <laughs> round of fundraising? <laughs> Well, according to some of the media, uh, you know, our valuation is 22 billion U.S. dollars. And, and what amazingly, you know, about this platform is, it, right now, the, the flagship app called Jinri Tokyo has about almost 200 million daily active users. And each user, daily active user, spends 74 minutes on the platform, which is longer than the time they spend on Facebook, Twitter, and in China, probably second to WeChat and QQ. So, and um, so I think, you know, this is being, you know, um, being uh, an executive at a large platform, I think it's really exciting and it means that you can make a lot of impact, yeah. you know, through the platform, hopefully in the right way. <laughs> but also some complaints, for example, uh, Xiao Hong's picture was mislabeled yesterday <laughs> as, <laughs> as someone's wife. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely. There are a lot of challenges. You know, like Facebook is facing there are a lot of challenges. You know, on the, um, you know, on the uh, online platform, and especially on you know, today's topic is digital era, and we are, you know, we are really an artificial uh, company that we're using machine learning to provide personalized recommendation content to our to target users. So I think how we can really, you know, uh, we can balance the technology and ethics and other. Issues, I think, is a big challenge, and not only for the company, but also for the entire society. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, tell us the story. I really enjoyed it. Uh, when you were speaking at Her Village International Forum, you talked about uh, how you adapted to your job uh, at Uber. Being a lawyer, you were you have to face a lot of legal complaints yes. from, from <laughs> the government officials and the clients. Uh, how, how did you enjoy those moments? You know, I think from a very high level, I would say, you know, I think the beauty of being able to have the opportunity to work at a fast-growing tech company is that you are not defined by your gender, your title, your position, and, and by, um, you know, you're, you actually kind of define who you are by what you are doing and what you're trying to do and what you have accomplished. I think that's something that is really interesting and challenging and entrepreneurial, actually. All sorts of issues you have to face, right? Yes. And have to adapt and to solve. Yeah. Okay, Shu Wei, uh, where well, you have been doing this design brand, uh, customized design brand by providing also an app uh, uh, to people. Uh, uh, tell us, do, do you regret at all about starting up a business by yourself? Okay, so we have to start with why. Why? Yes. <laughs> That's the hard part. Uh, anyways, um, I started as an entrepreneur about um, 17, 16 years ago. I started very young when I was 19 years old, still a college student. So being an entrepreneur or starting something, you know, it's not, um, sometimes I, I would not think about the reasons. I was only think about whether it's right or not for this business. And for Zaldo, Zaldo is, a, is a, basically the third company uh, of my career. And I started three years ago. Uh, when there's a kind of failure in my life, and I was in a kind of frustration, but maybe the, 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 the you know, it's kind of a dark time in my life. And still, I, I started this company because um, I still believe there's a, if there's opportunity in consumers' behavior, there's going to be a huge opportunity for the company. So that's the, that's the basic judgment on investments. And in China, I think in, uh, in the last three decades, the whole manufacturing industry is basically like a king of making things happen. But for design and R&D, especially for the consumer goods, is not so efficient. And it's, we call it like, like a baby. You know, we have baby steps for design and R&D. And if we can make that happen, it done the, just like the, just like what Japan companies are doing in, three, in 30 years ago, this kind of a curve, huge curve for the con consumers, for the markets. And we, we decided to do that. And I was like, I was really touched in on the way um, because the first time I went to Europe to talk with our designers, so one of the designers, uh, Chrysler Gomez Turun, they are top designers of, you know, Scandinavia area. And they said, we, want, we don't want to talk with you because you're a Chinese company, you're, you're copying everything, you know, you're doing copycast, and I said, we need to talk, okay. And we, we talk for one hour and they, they decided to cooperate with us. Uh, the collaboration is going to be the first time in China. And six months later, we were called local hero on wallpaper. Wallpaper is the top design magazine in Europe. And it said, there's a small, small company called Zhao Zuo, means manufacturing the design works, are doing a regional design brand in China, and they are trying to make this whole portfolio all clean. And that's why they call us local hero, when we only have 20 people in the company. So I was deeply touched, and after that, Maybe because of the starting point, we, we got all this kind of media coverage for the company, and we were uh, we were growing, you know, slowly but very healthy, you know, uh, in the last three years. So we, I think that's probably the, the deep down value for me of doing this. A lot of fulfillment and pride. But how do you find the consumers' uh, reaction to the services you provide? Uh, are Chinese consumers willing to pay for design? I think um, I think it's half half. You know, fifty percent from the you know interpersonal experience. We did a lot of market research, talking with uh, consumers, and we realized that new consumers, especially young women, well, female, basically the, the, the major part of the consumers. So they are different from the last generation because the internet. They have lots of information. They can compare all the prices. They know what is good, what is not good. Maybe 20 years ago, the consumers are buying stuff for the label, for the brand name, not for the real value. They don't know how to touch and uh, you know, to distinguish the right things. But now, I think 
very different way we, we did this market research. Also, we did some sort of you know survey uh, online with our consumers, and we, we can see this trend. They are doing they are looking at the original design brand, also with affordable price because design brand, you know, before is basically luxury things. Now they are more like affordable for the mass market. So it's kind of true, you know, they, they're making the middle, the consumers and design works. And I, I believe the demand on original design is on the rise, actually. Actually, yes. Yeah, with this upgrading of consumption uh, and lifestyle uh, changes in China. So uh, the next question, have you ever found that your gender um, becoming a kind of barrier to achieve things that you wish to achieve? Or uh, in another words, do you find there's a, um, obvious or, or not obvious discriminations uh, in your process of uh, you know, doing the business because you're a woman? 小红就想问一下你觉得在创业这个过程当中有没有觉得你的性别本身给你带来某些障碍的或者说有没有遇到一些有意义的或者是无形的一些性别的歧视在你的创业过程当中 我们从来不会太想我们的性别，性别其实并不重要。嗯，所以，呃，但你也别人认为认为这是什么优势。呃，其实女性，我认为天然和男性它是有区，它就是不同的。女性本身她的经历，呃，这个体力，呃，包括思
I started this career when I was 29. And I really thank uh, the founders of our fund for taking a risk on me because, you know, 29 years old, married, without kids, of course I'm gonna have a kid someday, maybe two, maybe three. And they took a risk and, you know, said she's the one we want, you know, so that was a big risk for a guy to take. Um, and you female. feel a, a little bit obliged to them, right? You I have do. To prove is, that they made the right decision yeah, by hiring you. Which is why maybe I feel guilty <laughs> taking maternity leave sometimes. But, <laughs> but you know, um, but I think it's, um, there's, there's, but I, I made it, you know, at one point in my life I thought, well, do I want to just be full-time mom because there's so much, that would be better fulfilling as well. But I like my job so much and what I'm contributing to the world that I want to stay in the workforce. And so since it's a decision that I made, I have to accept, I don't really believe in work-life balance. I think that, you know, I made a decision to work, which means I'm not, there, I'm not gonna be as home as much as other moms, you know, and I think that's just a choice I made and, you know. Respect that. You know, that, that's, although it's a personal choice, but on the other side, it also highlights the social expectation of a mother, of a wife, of a, of a, uh, a woman yeah. in China. Uh, I don't know whether you, you uh, guys uh, are aware of this, but according to an international survey, Chinese women work the longest hours out of all nations, uh, including paid and unpaid jobs. We also work uh, one and uh, two hours more at home than our husbands and, and boyfriends. <laughs> so it is a balance issue because uh, in, in China, uh, as a businesswoman, I've been ask this question again and again all the time by saying, you know, how would you how, how, how did you balance your work and life? Uh, that's a very fair question. The unfair part of that is that men are not asked that question. So by taking a little revenge uh, for every interview, male interviewee on my show, I ask them that question. <laughs> how do you balance your work and life? And they, they all look astonished. Why? Why do you pick on me to ask that question? Well, but, but actually that tells the, the fact, the reality we're living in. You know, people or the society expect us to be good wife and good mother before we are good businesswomen. But uh, that's the pressure on everyone. Liu Zhen, how do you see that, that issue? You know, I think uh, putting, my side, uh, putting myself aside, you know, I have to say that I think technology the development of technology actually enable us, female and mothers, and also mother of two, mothers and, and, and women executives and just women workers in general, to be able to take advantage of this technology and be able to have a better work-life balance. You know, I talk to my children, you know, uh, on video all the time, um, you know, and uh, there's just a lot of, you know, we have the WeChat, so I WeChat, you know, some of our, you know, helps to run the errands for me. So I do believe that with today's technology development, that there is actually a better chance for women to, to for women to have a better work-life balance. And um, so I think, speaking of myself, you know, I actually, I, um, for some reason, I, um, you know, because in my generation, my husband is also the only child of his family, and uh, it's you know, the same, in, in the same gener generation. So I guess we expect the same. So we kind of, you know, divided our, our, our housework, you know, really by, by each of us strength. Like my, my, my husband is really good at cooking and packing and doing a lot of this <laughs> traditional men's work. Yeah, you know, and I'm really good at um, eating, you know, giving orders <laughs> and giving orders, executing things, <laughs> making arrangement for a vacation, for example, and he just executed it. So I guess you know, <laughs> that's kind of a division of work help, and also I think the expectation, at least in my generation, for a female and male, it's I think it's very equal and very modern. In so way. yeah, you so you do need understanding and. Uh, uh, the supportive partner of life uh, yeah. to really yeah. make and, it work. And, yeah. and because the division of work is really not, uh, you know, really not divided by gender. Mm -hmm. It's really by, you know, kind of the, the, the strength, you know, the things that you are good at or maybe the things that he is good at. Okay. So. Good to find a good balance <laughs> <laughs> among yourselves. But actually, the very need to balance work and life for many women creates new business opportunities in this market, in the economy, right? And actually, Cao Zuo, 
uh, also try to make people's life easier and more efficient by picking up the right design for your house, house uh, houseware, and also make life you know uh, easier to manage, right? How do how how do you find this? The fact that most Chinese women work, and actually the working ratio of Chinese women in China is seventy percent higher than French men, which is only like sixty percent. <laughs> But that fact alone creates a lot of business opportunities. Come on, girls, right? We need apps to take care of our kids' education, or hiring an American um, you know, elementary school teacher to, to teach English uh, on the internet, right? And we, we can do uh, uh, shopping overseas to buy the right formula or right, right nutrition for our babies, uh, which were not available for our mothers, for example. So this market really creates a, a lot of demand because women are both working and taking off their households. So how, how do you find uh, the, uh, how, how big the market is? So maybe let me share a little story about yeah. the consumers. Yes. So uh, last year we organized the users party in our office. It's basically a housewarming party for the office. So we, we, plant, we sent out around 140 invitations um, based on all the past experience, there's going to be 100. Okay. But then there comes like nearly 300 people, all in couples. But, well, all the couples, the young couples, you know, they're beautiful couples, young and uh, energetic, they're walking in the same kind of position. The female, the girl, in the first. And then the husband and boyfriend. Okay, and all the girls are kind of, you know, they have this strong and aggressive and beautiful, you know, emotion on their face. Okay, and the feels, I, I think our, our users, some, someone asked me, like, what's the typical users of Zhao Zhu? I said, very confident young woman. Mm -hmm. That is true. And then we, we, we realized that it's a, it's a, we, were, we, were, we are loved by the girls, and their husband basically feel, well, this is my task to be here, to, to, to join the party. Well, it's okay, it's my duty. And then we did this, this is the second survey, that what percentage of our users are male? Then the number was 65% based on our database. I was surprised because based on what we saw, they are all girls, but in the, in the, in the database it's 65 male. And then we started to call back, and you know, what's the situation? And well, all the husbands said, I have no idea about your company, but my wife used my credit cards. Uh. And I need to do, I need to finish the, all the delivery service. <laughs> so uh, women do control like 55% of the consumption decisions in households. And many of them are paying on their own credit cards too, uh, more, more and more so. Well, okay, uh, according to um, a survey that Her Village Academy did earlier this year, uh, among all factors that influence your sense of happiness and well-being uh, among Chinese women, the top three factors, number one is health, and number two is free time, and number three is the potential uh, of your career. And actually, um, the work-life balance comes the fourth factor that affects women's sense of well-being and, and happiness, which is very telling by itself. But then we also find that although women enjoy more or less the equal uh, higher education opportunities and uh, you know uh, work opportunities at the junior level, as soon as it goes beyond the middle-level management, uh, the representation of women drops very sharply. Uh, on a, a high executive levels, uh, Chinese women only compose of like average 22% of uh, companies, uh, a little bit higher in uh, multinational corporations and the private sector, but lowest in state-owned enterprises. So um, to enhance women's representation in the leadership level, what are some of the suggestions you want to make to other women? Uh
。所以，如果说我们想鼓励更多的女性能够呃在领导的岗位能够参与这种决策的过程，你对年轻的女性有一些什么样的建议？还是自己的主观能动性吧。其实我们就是很多公司确实是的，呃，在中高层岗位上，男性是多于女性的。从我的感觉，我觉得很多女性她的意愿就不强。嗯、呃，其实女性分两种啊，一种就是女性她享受享受生活，呃，志在当下，就她。因为我我我觉得过去几十年也接触过不，就是有很多女性朋友，有的人是，呃，她蛮满足于当下的状态和生活的，这没有什么对和错。还有一种女性就属于像我们在座的各位，比较能折腾，然后愿意去不断的前行啊，愿意呃，就是不断的去打拼啊，愿意不断的去成长。所以就是在，呃，还有，当然他们都太年轻了。其实，杨澜妹妹，我不知道就。还属于同龄。到了女性到了一定阶段的时候，我敢说，其实女性是有瓶颈的。嗯、呃，在一个年龄段，她是有生理的问题的。那么这个年龄，其实，呃，她的工作效率，呃，她的生产力是下降的。这一段会影响。一、啊、刚好也在这个年龄段，事实上也是升职的最高峰。因为一般来说，我们在四十五岁到五十五岁之间，是我们人生积累最丰富、经验最丰富，然后这个最能够达到顶峰职位的时候。恰恰在这个时候，女性的，呃，有那么百分之三四十吧，我不能说全部，嗯，因为身体和心理和生理的问题，它这是一个大自然的规律，自然而然你的效率会低于男性，所以我觉得有个人意愿的问题，也有自己身体的问题。呃，导致在这个阶段，呃，这个男性和女性在高位上的比例失衡，这是我从我的医学角度看这个问题。我自己本身也承认，我非常幸运，在我今天这个年龄，然后我的第一个创业阶段结束，让我重新调整自己，在二次创业的路上，让我有更多的时间来放松，同时又释放自己。否则，如果一直在那一条路上走的时候，我觉得我自己的体力和精力也拼不过去了。嗯，所以有一些人生中也是不同的阶段要进行调整。对，所以、嗯、我先帮你翻译完，<笑>比较长了。<笑>我是 <Shiba> says, <笑> well, uh, well, she, she believes that、uh, self motivation、uh, is still the the fundamental、uh, issue.、Um, you know, Sheryl Sandberg, of course, she she said, you know, we should lean in, we should motivate ourselves to achieve our our highest potentials.、Um, And Chao Hong also believes that、uh, at certain age, maybe the maternity leave and also the the menopause、uh, are the very important physical and emotional adjust uh, adjustment uh, stage uh, in women's life. And in her own case, she、um, uh, deliberately slow down a little bit at this age and try to、uh, find another way. To be more creative and innovative、uh, by be becoming、uh, an investor,、uh, so she believes that、uh, we have to uh, uh, recognize our physical and, and emotional um, uh, uh, situations and help to、uh, try to adapt to the new circumstances. It's not about、uh, working at the same pace all your life, but some adjust、uh, adjustment is needed at certain age. Uh, uh, period. So,、uh, what are the reactions of your girls? For me, I think the number one thing is to have role models.、Um, <laughs> sounds weird, but you were one of my role models growing up. You might know that. Your role models are many women.、Um, and then, in my own industry, I have many, many venture capital women. Another one by the name of Soho, actually, who she would take her babies to board meetings and breastfeed them, even.、Um, You know, so I think you have to have role models that show you that it's okay to be an entrepreneur, be an investor, and they made it happen. And Cheryl Sandberg's book, for example, is an inspiration to everybody. Everything to do with her village stories. You just have to have role models to keep going and to make it possible. Thank you, Liu Jin. So I guess my my advice or my、um, my thought would be, I think, just don't set boundary,、um, you know, to yourself too early. And just don't, you know, don't limit yourself. 
And I do think, as I said earlier, I do think that you know we should define our own gender in a way, you know, um, our own title, our own way of doing things, and our own responsibilities. Especially if you work in a fast-growing tech sector, you know there isn't really, you know, maybe you are. Let's say that you are a BD, a sales director, but there are probably more things that you can do in the corporation than what you're currently doing, and you just. I think you should. I think for female uh, colleagues, I do tend to discover that they sometimes might set boundary too early. You know, you know, probably when I on my honeymoon, uh, we are expecting babies, and I think that's you know, it's it's really softball. You know, I think there are a lot of things that not only on this but other you know maybe new job, new opportunities, new tasks appear in the company. You just do it, and even if it's not within your scope of responsibilities or duties, yeah, that's what I think. Sure. I agree with Anna that there's um, always role models in your life, and um, for me, coincidentally, you know, not intentionally, I have three very strong women on my board. And uh, Cassie Xu and uh, Annabelle Long, so they are all strong mothers, uh, successful you know career, and they, they kind of find a balance between life and the work, and uh, they are still quite in a very senior position. So that is one thing that we have role models, and we have so all these friends. The second thing is like uh, I think still we we can't, we have to make choice. There's some um, we we can't want everything. Baby, marriage, you know, successful career, respect, everything, social, you know, social status, all this. When we make the decision, for example, for me, I'm an entrepreneur, so that I have to decide there's going to be a quite long time. I have to make sacrifice. I have to give up something. So that is, um, um, I think that's basically a choice. It's the choices that we have to make. But actually, uh, sometimes we may not need to make such hard decisions, I uh, hope, uh, in the future because the, the society would, would be more supportive and our families would be more supportive for us to achieving our life potentials. Recently, there's a, 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 a hot topic on the internet uh, by asking young people to write a few things, uh, a few sentences to their mother before they were born. You know, uh, uh, how, how should I? How should I phrase this? Mm -hmm. no, write a few words to your mom before she gave birth to you, basically. That, that's the topic. And uh, among the most popular um, uh, comments, including, don't marry my father because of me. <laughs> uh, Seek your own dreams. Go to college. Create your business. You know, things like that young people write to their mothers. So we can see that uh, in the past, the, the, the old stereotype of a mother being a sacrificer to giving up, to give up your life potentials or opportunities to, to you know, serve the family or, or, or to serve your children is now different. Even children's expectations of their mothers have been changed. That's very uh, uh, interesting to observe. That's the, how our society is being transformed. Okay. Uh, upon that, we have been talking a little bit uh, already, and now I would like to open the floor for questions. Um, we have many young women here, and, and also men. Uh, please ask questions. So you can raise your hand, and we can hand over the microphone. Thank you. We can now accept the questions. 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 We can now 哎，后面有一位，那那边。啊，谢谢。Thank you and uh, I learned a lot from your um, experiences and thoughts. Um, so my question is, as an entrepreneur, um, when do I know that, um, you know, you encounter a lot of difficulties, right? And when do you know this is the amount of um, problems that you, you encounter that is, you know, normal 
um, in your startup life, and when do you know that um, you know it? Maybe it means it doesn't. The, the idea doesn't work. Yeah, when to give up? Yeah, and when like um, so for the things you um, how <laughs> well, that's a very how, important question. How do you know it's not working? It's because yeah. it's normal or because it's not working. Okay. Thank you. So how do you know? How do you know that this is the breaking point? Right. You want to go on with this? This is just a, a normal issue that every uh, you know entrepreneur would face, or this means something fundamentally wrong. I should give up in time. How would you make that decision? Uh, to whom you want to address the question? Maybe everyone. Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> now let me let me just choose two maybe. Uh, 那个小红可以来回答这个，就是你在创业的过程当中肯定会遇到很多很多的困难。你什么时候觉得这个是我我要扛过去的？什么时候这意味着已经这个此路不通，我需要及时的止损或者是呃放弃？其实有的时候放弃也是很大的智慧，对吧？但是怎么样来做这个决定？你有没有遇到过这样很困难的时候，就需要做这个决定？其实没有人知道你该什么时候放弃，什么时候坚持。如果你你如果你知道你要放弃这件事情，你就不会开始了。就是是如果如果是这个商业模型就是嗯不能够持续下去的，那你也要知道什么时候停止嘛，对不对？其实刚才我在外面，我认识舒伟也是第一次哈。我刚才在问他，我说你在创业之前你在做什么？他说我是做并购的，我是做投资的。我就在想，如果让我从头来的话，我就会先去先去到资本市场转一圈。也就是说，你先在这个行业当中去了解一下，有一些准备，把商业逻辑想清楚了，你再开始。如果你就这样贸然进来了，然后你说我干一段时间，我再撤下来，这已经是很难了。对，而且创业要求，创业一种精神就是不放弃，坚持走下去。你在干的时候，你就在想我什么时候该停，什么时候不该停。我觉得我们在整个创业过程当中，从来没有想过停。只要你踏上了这条路，无论如何要走下去，因为在中国这样的一个大的市场环境下，只要你坚持，我觉得所有的路都能走下来，只不过是市场大和小、商业大和小的不同。但并不意味着你在过程当中还要想着我什么时候停下来，什么时候不做。我不认为一个创业者应该想这样的问题。但是在比如说，比如说你借的钱像贾跃亭一样多的时候，你就会想，<笑>是不是该停下来？所以。说我说，有的时候这个故事太大了，啊，那是到了另外一个阶段了啊，那是另外一个阶段。那个时候已经有那么多的智囊团，已经有那么多的背后的这个人在听，撑着你，挺着你，已经不是你能决策的了。有的时候已经开始要听啊，更高层、上层的顶层的这个上层的意见了啊，大家共同的决策了，已经不是你来决策了。当你来决策的时候，呃，早期要想清楚。我所以说，我说踏上创业之路的时候。我觉得多一些心思在这个商业想法和行业的了解上，因为今天这个时代信息是透明的，掌握知识和了解信息也是很快的，跟我们当年已经完全不一样。我那个我们那时候什么都不知道，我们就往前走了，有很多运气在里面。尽管困难重重，但是今天的创业，我觉得应该是多了解一些信息，多了解一些资讯，然后想想清楚一些，找一些合伙人，大家一起来往前走。So think clearly, do your homework before you start. And once you start it, before you uh, get yourself too much into the debt, <laughs> you should still go, go forward and, and try to no, not giving up. So Xiaohong's advice is no giving up. Uh, once you believe this is, this is what you have a passion to do. Shu Wei, do you have any advice? When should you stop? 嗯、um, ，before that, that I was I started the company in 2014, and um, um, I was in a failure, and I I know I know many many things about failure, and I know many things about when should we give up. I have to say that one of my core advantage and disadvantage of myself is uh, determination. I most of the time I gave up too late, especially for my last company. Uh, we work on that business for three years with a mobile app. And I, I want to say that sometimes you, you can never know when should you give up, but 
the things will let you know that gradually, no matter how determined, how you know painful you are, you will know it at some point. And be natural. And the only advice I can give you is that be honest and never over trust yourself. Be honest. 我你刚才我在想问我刚才的这个回答还有一种商业逻辑可能是跟政策跟这个呃因为我们的商业就是想要成功的话还有几个层面你要有你要符合时代的你要有这个符合时代政策制度的背景环境下然后有客户的需求有
ready to, you know, has to cook breakfast for my kids. So that is my kids time, and they are pretty self-independent. They're four and six years old, and I think I train them very well from a very self-centered perspective, <laughs> because I need them to be very independent. And, and then I have to lower my standard, so even if they were very unmatching ugly clothes, and I'm fine with that. Yeah. <laughs> you have to really lower your, your standard. And, and they would have very simple breakfast, you know, good nutrition, but no, we're not making fancy. Not fancy. So no fancy uh, kind of Chinese style, because sometimes congee takes a lot of time. It's only milk, cereal, cold milk. And because it's easier. <laughs> <laughs> so I think you know there are a lot of tricks in the life that can help you manage your time wisely. And, and lower I, your children's expectations. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I I send my kids to school most of the time. You know, it is a thirty hours, uh, a thirty minutes, sorry, thirty minutes drive, and actually help them do their English homework on their way to school while driving. No, no, I, you know, I have to say that I'm privileged to have a driver uh, that who can, you know, uh, actually drive us to school, but, yeah. but I help them to do the homework. Yeah. And then after I drop, drop them at school, I actually have an hour to go back to the company, to, to go back to the city, um, to go to work. Then during that hour, I schedule a lot of meetings, and I kind of also review my my uh, kind of my day schedule agenda, what the priorities I need to do. So I think that also helps. Um, and then I have meetings, and after lunch, I will schedule myself another 10 minutes to do that, uh, to do the, the, the exercise, just follow the key, right? That's what I always say that you can actually leverage the resources and technology to get a lot of things done. So that's how I manage my time. Yeah. Great. I would like and to. And still improving on it. Yeah. Well, basically, when you have no time, spend more time doing your fitness exam uh, <laughs> exercises. Well, I, I also find that's very, very important. You have to be physically and spiritually fit to handle uh, the, all the issues you have to face. Right. So spend more time um, uh, and be disciplined to do your fitness program. And I wanted to say, really leverage, you know, your uh, calendar. Uh, you know, your phone, schedule, you know, schedule and uh, yeah. maybe various apps, you know, yeah. do, do all your shopping online when you're waiting in the car or <laughs> waiting in the subway. There are a lot of things you can do. You just need to be smart and really leverage the resources you have. How to le leverage the resources and technology you have. Okay, and, and anyone want to, want to answer the, the last, uh, the second question, which is, you know, when you, when you're you know, single child of the family, and you and your husband have four parents to take care of, and then two children. Uh, how do how do you do that? I have one suggestion: send your parents to Xiaohong's uh, health check <laughs> <laughs> to make sure they are they're in good health. You know, uh, I have my parents living uh, with me, and I I always appreciate and I I, I um, uh, try to let them know all the time how grateful I am that they are in good health themselves. <laughs> and I say, mom and dad, please take care of yourselves. You know, that's the, that's the biggest blessing uh, in, in my life. And uh, they do their own exercises every day. Uh, well, that's, that's my tip. <laughs> that's my tip. But I, I, I fully understand the pressure on many women because when they are the major <laughs> caretaker in the family, uh, taking care of parents as well as children, and then husband, is a big challenge and demand for for women. So they do need more support uh, in technology, in social services, in, in the companies, uh, and by your partners and husbands. Okay, uh, maybe last question, maybe last two questions. Yeah, please. Maybe in that. Thank you. Yeah, give give the, the mic to, to the gentleman, please. Thank you. Uh, I'm a graduate from a School of Engineering and Applied Science, 2002. Uh, it's great to see the panel here and uh, to see that we uh, take women leadership in, uh, in the marketplace, in the workplace, uh, in such high, uh, uh, high attention. But I couldn't help but to, uh, to reflect just in the past months. We see what happened globally, right? uh, especially in the US. We see it in the uh, entertainment industry, the Harvard Weinstein case. We see what happened in Fox News. We see what happened you know, in the uh, you know, and the powerful positions that 
have been causing harm to uh, the women in the uh, you know in the society, not even in the workplace. And I also can help uh, that while we have a, a wonderful president here, we also have another president not far from here that um, we're openly <laughs> talking about derogatory comments to women. They, he termed it as a locker room banter or you know, boyhood humor, right? Now, so so with, with the leaders here, my question is, um, as leaders here, right, not only women's leaders, but also the leaders here, future leaders here, how can we work together to uh, to empower women, you know, in the, in the, in the workplace, in social, uh, in social, social, uh, other, you know, aspect that to empower women uh, to not be a victim and also to create a workplace really to 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 give the opportunity to help women to realize all their uh, full potential. Well, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I would suggest um, uh, applause for this gentleman who raised this question. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, we, uh, let's face the reality. In, in the reality, we, we still face a lot of discriminations, harassment, uh, and directory stereotypes against women. Uh, what can we do to improve that, to change that? <laughs> Uh, 题目就是说,这个因为前一阵有这个Harvey 大男子主义或者对女性的这种歧视的话你觉得我们可以做一些什么来改变这样的一个现状比如说在你自己的公司里会company policy perspective, you know, we of course take it very seriously. Um, and we, you know, we, we, we do have a kind of a moral, um, ethnic committee. Yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah. committee, ethics, ethics yeah. committee that we would, um, you know, um, not only, you know, of course, fire, fire such course and doing serious investigation, but also promote, um, we do promote uh, kind of the respect of female uh, leaders and uh, colleagues, co-workers. You know, one of the uh, one of our product leads. You know, we do have you know product uh, business units, and one of the product leads, which you know leads the most fast-growing uh, product in our company, that she is a female product lead, and she is you know she's very very young and talented, and I think. In, inside the company that we do need to promote the cultures that, um, that we have, you know, we, we endorse and we support uh, those female leaders to take on, especially tech company, to take on engineering and product uh, positions. I think that's at least, you know, from a company's policy perspective and management perspective, that's something that we, we're doing right now. Um, and I think that we can do more, definitely. Well, yeah, and I think, you know, this happened, what you're referring to a lot, happened in Silicon Valley as well. And I actually asked a lot of female entrepreneurs in China if they experienced this. I was so surprised that they were surprised. They had never, I mean, I don't know why, I was surprised to find that they never experienced that in China fundraising. Um, I, sh I think it might be different in the entertainment industry and maybe in the financial industry, I don't know, but uh, that's why I looked at you, I don't know. Why? But but, but in the society, in for yeah. example, a, a lot of women filed um, sexual harassment in public transportation, uh, in the subway, in the bus. Uh, act, actually, the number is as high as like thirty percent of the women surveyed saying that uh, in their um, uh, younger age they have experienced some sort of uh, uh, sexual harassment in whatever verbal or physical. Uh, uh, situations. So I guess the, the, the brief answer is that we say no to this. And for us in the, in the media, for example, we, we should have our voices uh, heard to go uh, to, to uh, fight against certain norms and stereotypes against women. Uh, uh, 
About a year ago, a very famous automobile company put on an advertisement uh, by saying that you, you need to spend this amount of money every month. You put aside this money to support your dog, this money to support your car, and this money to support your girlfriend. And that, that raised a lot of outcry in the public. They have to with, with, uh, withdraw that commercial uh, immediately. So that's how the, the public opinion and how when we uh, raise our voices by saying no to these phenomena would uh, you know, stop it. But I appreciate the question you raised. Thank you so much. OK, last question, please. Ah, uh, so many hands. Maybe, yeah, that lady, please. Put my hands three times and finally I'm got sorry. <laughs> I really appreciate the opportunity to ask the last question. And it is an important question, I think. I come from UNESCO, and gender is one of the two global priorities of the organization. So today we're talking about women leadership, and my question is about, about gender. So what in your personal experience and your observations, what is the difference between women leadership and uh, male leadership, or male and female leaderships. You know, are, are they in sync, in harmony, or uh, are they complementing each other, or, or are they in conflict sometimes? And if so, what are the conflicts, uh, especially in terms of values, values-based leadership? You know, what is your experience? I'm really eager to understand from your perspective. Thank well, you. actually, thank you. I appreciate the question. Actually, we, we hear women uh, and men talking about characteristics of women leadership or male leadership by saying that women are more attentive to, uh, you know, relationship, how to inspire people, how to collaborate, teamwork. Uh, is that true? Uh, because if you say this is true, does that mean on some other sides uh, of the leadership, for example, for example, to be very decisive? Uh, to have strategic thinking, uh, do women naturally do worse? Uh, you know, that's a tricky question, actually. 就是我们到底这个女性领导力和男性领导力是否因为性别的不同真的有区别吗? 有的时候我们说女性更愿意倾听,更愿意照顾大家的这种情绪等等的。但是你如果说这个是正确的,或者说这的确存在的, 那么另一方面是不是说女性缺乏决策力缺乏战略眼光也是对的呢嗯你们觉得呢女性和男性的领导力真的有这么大的差别吗小红你觉得有吗这个男女性别天然的这种属性呃要说我我是认为有的呃但
，然后男女是相辅相成的，互相补充的，这是最重要的。呃，所以呃，不要去纠结于怎么样，每一个人都是个性化的。那么不能说完全的，我只是说通通常意义上来讲，为什么这么多的呃。公司的高层确实是刚才说从生理的原因讲女性少，但是其实在，在在这个到了执行层面高层的时候，它是一个不仅仅是决策，它实际上是一个呃需要理性思维落地执行，从把把这个决策转化成执行的这样一个转变过程当中，我觉得男性可能在梳理、在逻辑上、在系统的搭建上，我觉得是超越女性的。呃聊聊，我也完全同意你的说法，但是我们也可以听听其他几位的想法。呃，这也是刚才那个这个说，呃，这也是为什么说我自己的呃这个团队当中哈，就是我很多我利用很多创业公司，呃，最成功的创业公司的组成大概就是呃男女比例的这种，我觉得我不能再说了，是吧？这个这是一个 trick， 但是呢，它确实是。他有他成功的一面，因为我我现在在推动着这样的一个过程，我自己也从我自身总结经验，然后在这个整个梳理过程中，我发现他也是呃，确实是在这个逻辑当中，他是呃，有他背后这个，就是我有我很多公司，他走出来确实是因为这样的搭建啊、呃，他成功了，呃，包括我现在的一些创业公司。是以男人为主的呃，呃，不是以男人为主，<笑>是在决策和梳理理性逻辑的这个关系上，就是，呃，你你一个你一个决策战略出来以后，那这个是团队呃大家共同来梳理出来的。但是当你往下执行的时候，中间有一个层面，可能是呃我自我我的感受是，呃男性他能够给他具象化，给他呃给他梳理出来的速度和。杨<笑>澜一直这么看着我，我不敢说话。<笑><笑>对不起，对不起，我给你压力了。<笑> OK， 你们说吧。就一方面是，对对对，一方面是我们这个社会就是存在的现状，的确是这样的哈。那么你们，你们从各自的这个角度来看，你们觉得有没有所谓的女性领导力和男性领导力，就是天然的一种差别？嗯、um, ，I think that female, uh, the female back, CEOs that we backed. And we tend to like to back. We like to hold 姐不同味儿，妹 ，if that makes sense. Like 姐 not 妹 But anyway,、uh, but basically,、uh, the women we're backing, I think,、um, um, they're already very strong and have. I think that the thing that's that I notice is they're very well rounded, and especially they know how to make their own brand. So whether it's Papi Jiang or Shui with Zhao Zuo or.、Um, You know any of our consumer products? The women really know how to make their own IP, and they embrace their own IP. I think that makes them really successful for a lot of consumer brands. But do you think there is a women characteristics of leadership and males leadership? I think leadership should be like this. What is leadership? It is the ability to bring together a group of women to your side. Simply put, women and men's difference. Where is the difference between men and women? The way they communicate. 它是女性天然的这种链接能力、沟通能力，然后，对吧？我们靠我们靠这样的，然后我们靠信任、靠支持，我觉得是靠这种方式来聚气的。但是男人怎么聚气？怎么能够一群人跟随着你？<笑> okay, 所以，我我他俩的领导的方式不同意你说的。他俩领导力的那种感，<笑>领导力的那种感觉是不一样的。男人是要靠理性的。然后系统化的、非常逻辑性的梳理出来的这种方式，来聚集一帮人。当然，他有他的这个，最终我们是要一群人相信你、跟随你，就是他的男女之间让别人跟随你的感受、感觉是不一样的。呃，男人也有也有那个占山的大王，主要是靠义气聚集人，呃，不一定靠理性哈。呃，我们我我们先在听他们两个说一个，好不好？等会儿再回答这个。靠义气得有愿景，你也得有方向，<笑>你也得有让大家相信你能为什么能达到那个方向。难道女性没有愿景？难道女性没有愿景就可以说我喜欢你，你喜欢我，我们俩一块做生意吗？不，女性是这样，女性其实更多的因为有这种依赖感和认同感，所以女性更多的是相信，通过沟通链接和相信
就愿意在一起做任何事情。嗯、当然，女性要有决策能力，然后能够凝凝聚团队。OK， 对对。那个 I'm gonna speak Chinese because I feel like it's like a back to the college debating team right now. <laughs> Chinese, so Xiao Hong Jie can. 那个那个小红姐刚才的描述让我觉得我越来越不像一个女性。<laughs> 对，就我我自己觉得呢，可能女性天然有一些刚才说的身体上或者怎么样一些 characteristics， 但是我觉得女性后期的她的 education， 她的教育。他的 occupation， 比如说我做了律师，把 training nine years， 我做六九年的律师，做 execution， 对吧？做很多执行，需要很强的逻辑。就觉得你的教育，你后天的这个呃做的这个职业的培培训吧，或者这个 training， 还有你工作的这个环境，跟如果你是在一个，我想说，比如是一个互联网企业，是一个比如说技术型的企业，也可能是一个专利的企业，就是在不同的这个你的行业，那么这些可能呢会。就我觉得会给人一个更多的平衡吧，我觉得会模糊掉我们一开始说的这些可能 stereotype， 或者这些嗯、um, by nature 的吧，这些 characteristic， 我觉得会的。你说有吗？还会有，肯定是会有的。但是我觉得呢，会是一个很好的 balance out。那么就会发现，其实人最后，我觉得在职业中，他所表现的 leadership 更多的取决于他的经历，啊，他的过去的一些 experience， 他的 education background。然后呢，他的这个，比如说他的 occupation training， 你原来做过，你很长时间什么 accounting 或者怎么样，以及你所在的 industry， 我觉得这些东西可能在某种程度上会 outweigh 你自己，就是会超超于全。所谓天生的那些，会超于天天,天然的这些，或者说一个社会标准化的一个东西。So there's a debate, and I think our time is running out. Uh, well, basically, you can agree or disagree. Uh, uh, the behavioral differences of men leaders and women leaders is it by birth, by nature, or it's by training or by social influences? We can debate on that. But the the conclusion I can make is that a good leadership uh, takes a team. And we need more diversity and inclusivity to make a strong team a better decision-making process. So uh, on that matter, we do recommend and encourage more women to be a leader, uh, to raise the proportion and the representation of women in the uh, executive level of the companies, um, which will make more sensible decisions to respond to the market and the growth. Well, thank you very much, and uh, uh, I want you to join me in giving our applause to uh, our fascinating panelists. <laughs> and by concluding this afternoon's meeting, I would like to invite Safwan, our Executive uh, Vice President of Global Centers, mm -hmm. to give closing remarks. Safwan, please. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, uh, Yang Man, for this, and thank you, everybody, for your fantastic uh, discussion. I learned so much from it, and it's wonderful to have had uh, so many great questions from the audience. It's wonderful also to have so many alumni and alumni in the audience, so thank you. So I have a few observations on some of the things I've learned, and even though I missed much of the debate that was going on in Chinese, my Mandarin isn't great, uh, but... I think that it is a combination of uh, nature and nurture um, that defines uh, women's uh, leadership. I think women are um, better at being able to exercise both sides of their brain, the right side and the left side of their brain, better so than men, I think. Uh, you know, being able to um, leverage the, the creative, artistic, side of the brain with the analytical structured side of the brain. Women also are less afraid than men are to, um, to showcase, or, uh, to put into practice that capacity, that ability. You know, men tend to shy away from anything that might stigmatize them as being sensitive or creative or artistic. Again, this are, these are sweeping generalizations, and of course there are exceptions. The bottom line of it is that I do think that women tend to be, by and large, um, better leaders. And women, I mean, this is documented, and this is my area of study, which is education. Girls outperform boys um, around the world in terms of their, uh, uh, their schooling. So I think, you know, 
the point that I want to end with on this observation is that uh, on the nature and the training and I think the role modeling that uh, people on this panel uh, represent, it's incredibly important to uh, motivate not only women, but to motivate men and young boys to look at uh, women differently than perhaps we have in the former generations. Uh, I think one thing that you started with the Anglan is incredibly interesting, and that's the social dynamic. You know, what explains perhaps a higher participation of women in business in China versus other um, countries in the world? Um, and I think, you know, what you pointed to in terms of the one-child policy uh, that's been in effect until recently uh, may have uh, indeed something to do with it. But and it resonates. Why does it resonate? Because again, it's been proven and it's been shown that when society allows women, um, women's energy to be unleashed, um, they perform incredibly well. Um, and I think you know what holds women back in societies oftentimes are the uh, restrictions that come with a patriarchal, patriarchal um, you know history and and, and, and culture that pulls women back. But when they're given the opportunity, when society's constraints are relaxed, uh, the sky is the limit in terms of what uh, they can accomplish. So anyway, uh, this has been an incredibly um, useful, incredibly informative and educational uh, panel discussion. This is typical of the kind of conversations that our global centers around the world and the one in Beijing in particular want to encourage and want to um, continue to um, uh, to develop and continue to support. So I thank all of you and I invite you to come again and again uh, to these important conversations. And I really cannot thank you enough. I learned so much from the five of you and uh, it's really wonderful that you've been able to share um, your thoughts and your insights uh, with all of us and you know, thank you. You're, you're terrific. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank, Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. 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 Thank you, everyone.